What does the Apple Vision Pro mean for privacy and security? Hello and welcome to Tech First. My name is John Gutz here. As probably everybody who is in the digital world knows, Apple Vision Pro is launching. There's 200,000 sold. The reviews are actually pretty amazing, even from VR unbelievers. I count myself as one of those, even though I've had many of those devices. But we've barely begun having conversations around privacy and security implications of the Apple Vision Pro. Think about it. It has dozens of sensors. It's got cameras. It's got mics. It's got infrared sensors. It's going to map your home. It's going to map your bedroom, your kitchen, your living room. And its video is so good. It really looks like the real world. Imagine somebody hacking your reality. To chat about it all, we've got Jamie Boots. He's a principal security consultant from Synopsys. Welcome, Jamie. Hey, happy to be here. Super pumped to have you. I want to start with the quality because I tried the latest Vario VR headset at CES in Las Vegas. And Vario, of course, is not the Apple Vision Pro, but it's the only headset probably out there that will come close and maybe even be equal to the quality of the Apple Vision Pro experience. You're talking amazing clarity, and it really felt like I was different places. What's that mean? It's almost indistinguishable from reality. What's, what are the risks of that? Right. So we as humans, we are very visual beings, and so we rely on what we see. Seeing it is believing it. And Having these devices out there that can rewrite your reality on a whim can be a good thing. That's why you put it on. You don't put it on to pretend that you're in your living room. You put it on to see all that data projected up onto surfaces and to have this curated experience. And the challenge would be, I presume, if somebody could hack that, what could they inject into that experience? Because we've all seen the early adopter VR videos, right? Of the person who they're put in a cliff scenario or in a high place and they're freaking out and they're going all over the place. But I've even seen it recently. Actually, there's a viral video that's running around Reddit, probably went to TikTok first. And it's somebody who put a VR headset on her mother. And her mom sees something and literally starts running. Smash, she's in the kitchen, she smashes into the microwave and the headset is literally goes. Yeah, yeah. So that has been, like you mentioned, an old threat in terms of just displaying something that, that might be scary, might induce that flight or flight, fight or flight response. But they, you can also go more subtle. You can also, if you do have an overlay of your surroundings and you're bringing that into the alternate reality that display there exists the ability to maybe recognize a magazine and rewrite the headline or advertisers may look to subtly influence the your brand preferences blocking out competitors or altering again altering that that reality that that could be the far off spooky type implications but the other concerns are, you know, that this is new hardware with a bunch of sensors, a bunch of processing power, and the ability to do a complete survey of your living room, of your car, if you're taking it on the road, where it's like having a survey crew come in and potentially map your house. Apple calls it spatial computing for a reason. And it's certainly going to map what's going on there. And if we think out a few years, obviously we're going to have way more robots in our homes than we currently do. We might have a robot vacuum right now or other things like that. But that mapping might be something that's shareable to machines for usability and access and navigation inside your home. But yeah, if it got out and if some of this video got out, there's potential real problems with that. Now it is Apple. Do you trust Apple more than perhaps a Facebook or a Google who are basically ad networks or not so much? Like, like you mentioned, Apple is in the business of selling hardware, selling computers, selling, building that, those trusted computing platforms. So it's not in their business model to, to sell you out, maybe like a data harvesting company, something that is primarily an advertiser, but they 
they're also human in terms of coming to grips with this new technology, just because they may not act in a way that is is more or less malicious. Maybe we can give them the benefit of the doubt and the developers are just trying to do the best job they can. They're still human. They're still not perfect. And this technology is also new. So it doesn't matter who is developing on this new platform, on these new hard on, on this new hardware paradigm. There are still vulnerabilities that can emerge from how complex things are. Putting all of these sensors, all of this compute, all of these interfaces and bringing them all together in new ways, those new combinations can lead to problems that nobody foresaw. A decade ago, back, well, 15 years, and it's been a while. Uh, time when flies. Time flies. When the iPhone came out, Smartphones had been around for a couple of years, but Apple was the first to bring it to the market in a big way, a big successful way. And that garnered a lot of attention, both from security researchers who were poking it and trying to turn it into the most secure experience possible, and also through the attackers, the hackers who were trying to exploit those holes before they were closed. So it doesn't matter necessarily who is going to develop this. I can almost guarantee there will be new security holes. There will be new threats just because that comes with treading new ground. That makes sense. And it's interesting because if you look, it's based on Apple Vision OS is based on iPad OS, of course, which has a track record and history. So there's something good there. But there are zero days still coming out on iOS in general, right? And Apple, in fact, has some court cases going against Pegasus, which has used some of those zero days, shall we say, in interesting political and international ways. So, so there, there is a chance that there are challenges there. Now, if you look at iOS, iPad OS, and I guess Vision OS, they are different than a Mac or a PC, right? They're built as a console, an appliance model. You can install apps from an approved place and you can install those apps in an approved way and they're all sandboxed and everything like that. So it's a little different than some of the other devices that you might look out there that you can sideload on. You can get software from just about anywhere. But you said, like you said, it's a new device. It's got new capabilities. They must have added a huge amount to iPad OS because last I saw, nobody strapped an iPad on their face and called it VR or AR or anything like that. Yeah. So talk about some of the challenges that you've seen when somebody comes out with a new device for security. Right. To go back to the smartphone model, so many of these problems are old problems in new situations. Back when Unix, I'm not going to say, hey, you remember those Unix mainframes, but back in the day, back before my time, Unix mainframes were the primary way that anyone got anything done. And they faced problems with data, data confidentiality, keeping one user from accessing another user's data and resource exhaustion and other jailbreak type breakouts that, that could, were potentially threats back then. And they fixed it on the mainframes. And as we brought the, the idea, the paradigm of a multi-user environment and put it in our pockets, where if you think about it, each little application is its own little user. It needs resources. It needs its own little secure data storage. It needs its own secret crypto keys and it needs battery life, it needs display. Though they weren't locked down sufficiently once upon a time. And so those old mainframe vulnerabilities, those old mainframe problems came to the surface in this brand new technology. I expect to see old vulnerabilities just brought out anew where you may have applications maybe sniffing each other's sensor feeds or resource exhaust exhaustion or tampering with stored data. It's worth remembering since you brought up Unix, that Mac OS X essentially is Unix. It's based on Unix, the BSD, I believe, if I'm not mistaken on that. And iOS is essentially OS X or Mac OS now shrunk down to fit. And iPad OS is the same. So Vision OS will have some of those same roots. It's also interesting to remember that back in the beginning of the App Store, and we're talking like 2009, 2010, 
apps couldn't access anything out of their own memory space, <laughs> which was a bit right. of a problem because sometimes you want to access maybe video or photo because you're going to share it or use it or something like that, right? So that got changed pretty quickly. But then that does, as you say, open up some interesting avenues for people to read stuff that maybe they shouldn't. So this is Apple. Maybe it's a bit safer. They have a lot of experience in, there, there's a billion iPhones out in the world there. And I right. know there's some zero days, but there's pretty good security, probably better than Android on average, just because there's a, a, a smaller attack vector, a smaller attack space, because there's more uniformity of device and software on it. But it is an interesting thing. When do you anticipate the first cracks or hacks of Vision OS, and do you think they'll be made public or not? Oh, in terms of like jailbreak, where people try to get their hands on the device and bypass the secure bootloader and all that, or I'm um, sure people will do that, but I'm thinking of perhaps a state sponsored um, organization just trying to hack in. And to be able to read stuff they shouldn't read or do things that they shouldn't do in Vision OS. Right. Well, I expect the I expect the vulnerabilities to be found pretty quick by interested and well-funded parties. Because like this is new hardware, the software is going to have new calls. It's going to be able to make different calls to different sensors. It's going to be able to output different data to different displays that the phone wouldn't necessarily have access to. And so those are going to get scrutiny. The new functionality, anytime software can do something new, there's a chance it can do something wrong. I'm not going to put a timeline out there because I tend to go a little bit too conservative. I, when I was talking about artificial intelligence with the folks and they were like, when, did you when do you think we'll see this? And I was like, oh yeah, we'll see that in three months. And it was three days later. So I can't really predict. I got out of the prediction game. <laughs> well, that's not too shabby, actually. It is interesting if we think about what Mark Andreessen said. It's got to be, I'm going to go, I'm going to go a decade because you threw out a decade earlier in our conversation. It's got to be a decade ago where he said software is eating the world, right? And of course, I think somebody's updated that recently. To AI is eating the world, right? And essentially what that means is the percentage of value, the percentage of innovation that exists in products that is software, or in the case of AI, continues to grow. And it's interesting because if we look at what we're doing with VR headsets, we're making our world virtual, whether we talk about metaverse or augmented reality or mixed reality or something like that, we're adding some layers of intelligence to what we see right? And some layers of data to what we see. That is an interesting world we're moving forward to. And one, we, we already seen attack vectors from the heaters in fish tanks, right? And that's five years old, right? Yeah. That's five years old that somebody did that. And it's amazing to me to think how we're going to get hacked in the future. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a basic tenet of security that any time that you offer up some functionality for someone to do something interesting, someone else is going to come along and then try to figure out how to use that to harm someone else or enrich themselves. So as you have more things that people want to do with software, uh, there will be more ways to abuse that. I can see that as well. I'm still planning on getting an Apple Vision, an Apple Vision Pro. Are you? Not right away. I am not big into VR, AR type things. Mm -hmm. It's just, I'm old school. I prefer having a monitor that I can walk away from. So old fashioned. You want your reality to be real. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And I have a drawer full of VR headsets that I've used. And every time I want to use it, oh, it's been a month. I know I got to charge it. Oh, and then when it's finished charging, I don't feel like it. My worry with... Apple Vision Pro is that it'll be a similar experience. My thinking based on what I've seen about it so far and learned about it so far is it will be different. And at very minimum, it'll be something that I'll watch movies in. But yeah. at $3,500, that's a yeah fairly expensive home theater, I guess, in, in that sense, for one. <laughs> yeah, home theater for one. 
but I think I still probably will pick one up. Anyways, thank you so much for your insights. I really do appreciate it. It is an interesting and new and different way for us to get hacked. There's another one every day, it seems. And this is one we've got to think about now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.